Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this video right here, I'm continuing my PC build for an affordable PC for programming. And uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to see if it's affordable to use an old iMac and upgrade it and install Ubuntu on it and compare it to the Raspberry Pi 5 right here. If you watched my previous video, I showed you how I built this little mini PC using the Raspberry Pi 5. And uh, you can go check that out. But now I'll show you how I upgraded this old 2012 iMac and installed Ubuntu on it. And then I'll do a comparison using both of these right here. I'll add some programming languages. I'll run some AI on it. And uh, let's see which one is more affordable to do. So let's get into it. So everything is installed here on the iMac. I installed Ubuntu and I had to install some drivers for the Wi-Fi to work since this is an iMac and it uh, needed specific drivers for the Broadcom drivers. Uh, I'll leave everything inside the description if you want to uh, look into installing Ubuntu on an old iMac. But I have both of these systems running Ubuntu, my Raspberry Pi 5. So here are the specs on both systems with the Raspberry Pi 5. I bought the 8 gigabytes of memory model and it has a ARM64 uh, processor that runs a 2.4 gigahertz. It's very similar to the iMac because the iMac also has 8 gigabytes of RAM and it has a Intel Core i7 processor running at 3.1 gigahertz. And honestly, it runs very smooth. I have Visual Studio code installed here and it, it runs really fast. And let's do a code. Look, it runs really fast and smooth. Here's my app. And uh, here is Visual Studio code on the Raspberry Pi 5 and it also runs very fast here as you can see. Okay, so uh, we're gonna have some AI fun here. I connected my little time box uh, audio speaker right here to the uh, Raspberry Pi 5 so that it can have audio. I did that through Bluetooth. Luckily, the iMac, it supports audio on here uh, fine. So uh, I'm gonna run this Hume AI uh, voice chat right now. Let's see how it, it goes on, on the Raspberry Pi 5 here. Hi, how's it going? Hey there. Oh, cool, you're using a Raspberry Pi 5? That's pretty neat. You're doing well, thanks for asking. How are you finding the new Pi? How many exciting projects in mind? Look at that, it runs pretty fast, huh? Uh, yeah, I love the Raspberry Pi 5. What do you think of uh, the performance compared to uh, other mini PCs out there? I hear you. You sound pretty happy with the Pi 5's performance. It's definitely a powerhouse for its size. Compared to other mini PCs, the Pi 5 often punches above its weight, especially considering its price point. 
But I'm curious, what specific aspects of its performance have impressed you the most? All right, so that was running the Hume AI on the uh, Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, let's see how it runs on the iMac here. You got to allow the microphone. Hey, how's it going? Uh, I'm pretty good. I just uh, refurbished this old iMac and put in a new SSD and I installed Ubuntu on it. What do you think of that? That's awesome. It sounds like a cool project. You seem pretty stoked about it. What made you decide to go with Ubuntu instead of sticking with Mac OS? Uh, more for the security and uh, it's free, open source. And I'm actually comparing it to my Raspberry Pi 5. Which one do you think performs better, the Raspberry Pi 5 or this old iMac that I put Ubuntu on? Oh, interesting comparison. I guess the iMac might have an edge, depending on its specs. But hey, Raspberry Pi 5s are pretty impressive. What tests are you running on them? I'd really determine which one shines. So this iMac has an Intel i7 with a 3.1 gigahertz and uh, compare that to the Raspberry Pi 5. Which one do you think performs better? They both have 8 gigabytes of RAM, by the way. Oh, wow, that's a solid matchup. With an i7 at 3.1 gigahertz, I bet the iMac has the upper hand, especially for more intensive tasks. But the Pi 5 is no slouch either. Have you run any benchmarks yet? Hey, that'd be really interesting to see. <laughs> so look at that. Um, even AI, I think AI is saying it prefers the iMac. And uh, they're both great, by the way, because this one looks so neat. Uh, you can do a lot of cool projects with the Raspberry Pi 5. So the thing with both of these, right, it's um, we're talking about affordability here. Finding an old iMac, I think you can find one on eBay for like $100. So think about that. I installed a new SSD on it because you don't want to run the old hard drive on it that has a 5400 RPM. Uh, that one actually, I removed it here and this thing broke on me. Um, something happened with this hard drive. So that's why I put in a new SSD. And so the SSD makes it run so much faster. It, it runs um, connected through the SATA cable. So that's why I had to buy the whole kit to remove this monitor, uh, put in that drive to connect it through the SATA cables in there. And um, I actually also did another test by running an external SSD. You can do that as well, but there was an issue. Um, I ran an external SSD by plugging in to the USB port and I installed an old Mac operating system on it and it ran fine, but when you boot it up, it still searches for the old hard drive that was in this iMac and it kept on giving me an error. And so you'd have to keep on uh, unmounting the drive every time you log in. So that made it easier if you're kind of lazy, you don't, you don't want to buy the kit to open this up, remove the hard drive, put in an SSD. You can run an external SSD on it, but I wanted to do this whole project to make it clean. This old iMac here, it runs great for programming. Everything is smooth on here. You can run AI, you can run all of this stuff. And Ubuntu is a great operating system run here very secure and it's running very fast. So comparing that to the Raspberry Pi 5, the expensive part on this is, um, you know, the eight gigabyte model, it runs you roughly $80. So if you go to the 16 gigabyte, it'll run you $120. And that is just for, uh, for the board alone. So the thing that costs the most on this is to buy a monitor that you like, you know, um, the iMac is just, everything's there. It's, it's all built in with this monitor. This Raspberry Pi 5, I went with this Orzopa monitor because I saw a lot of cool gaming videos on it. And it is a great monitor, but it does cost a bit of money. And so I think that's where the price falls in. You know, you get this whole thing for 100 and this monitor is pretty much like it's over $100 for the monitor, unless you buy the little cheaper model. And then look, you're getting a smaller 16 inch monitor compared to a 21 inch right here. You know, it's it's not that big of a difference, I want to say. Uh, if you want something mini, portable, like very cool saving space, this is a cool option for programming. Uh, I love building this thing. Uh, if you want something that, you know, this, this monitor is very clear. Uh, it looks great. And if you want a all-in-one package right here where everything is built inside, you just carry this around. Very simple. All you have to do is buy that little SSD and install it. 
Uh, I think this is a great option too. Very affordable. Both of these are very good. So there you guys go. I hope you enjoyed this video I did right here on this build series for different affordable uh, computers for programming. And I love doing these to show you, you know, in 2025 here, everything costs so much today that a lot of people out there, they're looking for an affordable way to program using old computers here. And so I'll leave everything inside of the description on all of these links on how to upgrade this, the SSD I bought, the kit I bought for it, all of my stuff on here and Raspberry Pi 5 as well. Go check out that video on how I built this thing. It was very fun showing you all of this stuff. Uh, if you ask me which one would I go for, I still love the little mini here. It just looks so nice. And I love that thing. Just take some things into consideration. You know, I had to connect a Bluetooth speaker for this thing to get audio from it. And with this thing here, the iMac, the audio just worked perfectly on it. So uh, it just took some uh, time to install the drivers. But Ubuntu takes care of that if you run all the updates and stuff. It adds all the drivers for you. You know, iMac uses a different Wi-Fi driver. And so that's the issue with uh, using Ubuntu on IMAX. But everything runs fine. You do all your programming. Everything is great. I'll leave everything in the description. If you want to see anything else, just let me know. Leave me a comment. Give this video a like. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.